Hey y'all, my name is Arielle and welcome to The Real with Arielle where I chat with you all about garden, cooking, efficient home, um, and we're able to have some fun. I really like to be able to front load to be able to decrease the amount of work that I have to do later in the day just because like if you catch me after 2 p.m. But I'll usually push to five or six. But um, yeah, I try to really work within the times where my brain wants to work. So, so I am just gonna do some quick things before um, I head out. I need to go to the gym real quick. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and start making breakfast and a little bit of dinner, um, just so I don't have to do it later. So today we're having lemon butter cod over orzo with string beans and bread. And we don't have a lot of bread. So um, I wish I had started earlier. It won't be the full 12 hours. But we will be doing like a long rise bread. It's usually like the overnight no need bread. But I'm probably just going to get like a eight an eight to nine max hour recipe um, so that it can rest for about eight, eight-ish hours. Um, I really want some coffee, the iced coffee that I usually make, but not today because that is not gonna help with the workout that I'm about to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this bread. Okay, so got my recipe up on my phone right there and it is a three cups of flour, two teaspoons of salt, three fourths a teaspoon of active dry yeast, and one and a half cups of lukewarm water. So, something that I have been able to learn about just making bread is there is usually there is a ratio between. Um, time and yeast used and whenever there's more yeast used whenever there's more yeast used it usually means that it's going to be a quicker process now when there's so less yeast more time more yeast less time so whenever you're glancing at different recipes out there just try to keep that in mind. I am going to do this um, flour. No, I'm going to make this bread so that it can rest. Three. And then I am going to head on out. Oh, and I know that it's not best to scoop flour but whatever doesn't come into this I'm just not going to include it and then I want a cup and a half of lukewarm water forgot the camera's off I went ahead and tossed this salt in um, I'm just going to mix this around let it fall a little bit deeper in there real quick and I'm going to go get the active dry yeast Open this one yet? Oh, yes, I have. So we want three fourths of a teaspoon. So let me double check this recipe. Yeah, everything is in one container. One, two, Three. There are some recipes where you bloom the um, yeast out on the side, but usually with my no needs, I don't do that. And I am heating up my water right now. So clean as you go. So what else can I put away here? Go ahead and clean that up and I'm gonna take these away too. Now this water is warm to the touch. We can begin mixing this all together. 
And I'm gonna do little by little, or at least half and half. I noticed that the, I don't know the right words. <laughs> I'm able to work with it a bit easier when I don't have all the water in here at once. It gives a, some of the flower the opportunity to soak up some of that flower. So now I'm just gonna mix this up, make sure there is as little dry pieces of flour as possible. This is what I'm working with. And then it's 42. So I just want to make sure that everything has touched the moisture. Because if it doesn't touch the moisture, it doesn't have anything to rise with. So if you leave parts dry, it'll legit just be like dry clumps. But this is good. So this is what I'm gonna leave with. So now I'm just putting that saran wrap on to cover it. So it's time for dinner. Okay, we are back after work. Actually, a pretty good day at work. Um, it's just a lot of learning right now because of my new team. But I'm gonna go ahead and start dinner. It is 5.47 and I wanna go ahead and get this uh, bread ready to go and I'm also since I'll be over here I'm gonna go ahead and get the pizza dough ready for tomorrow so we can go ahead and start to rise I like to sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top to kind of create a buffer between my fingers and the stickiness of the dough um, Let's see how close but you can kind of see there's flour and I could just kind of scrape where it is dry to try to keep it off my hands as much as possible. Because it is, for me, I don't really like the flour or the mixture on my hands so much. It's kind of inevitable, but I, inevitable at times. There we go. See? Mm, but to get this, ooh, sorry. But to get this off, you just take more flour and rub it between your hands to basically dry it off, dry it up. But just try to get as much as off of your hands. I'm not gonna wash my hands yet because I'm about to get into some more flour. I'm gonna go ahead and put this near the oven while it, um, preheats to go ahead and give it a little bit more rise in this container so that it'll, and then after that's, after the oven is ready, I'll go ahead and slide it right in there. So now it's time for the pizza. I did go ahead and um, put the ingredients to the side because I had a little bit of free time earlier in the middle of work. Um, so there is uh, 562.5 grams of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, I need to get the teaspoon of yeast, and then I have 14.4 grams of water here, and then 53 grams of olive oil here as well. Um, it says that the water needs to be very cold, 
it's not super super cold but it's cold ish um so i'm gonna go get this yeast i don't want to use a packet today so now i have my teaspoon of yeast gonna toss it in and i'm gonna pour this water over it well it's the water oil mixture and i'm gonna mix it oh i forgot i unplugged this plugging it in is plugging it in is very important i found out i've rediscovered um phantom power and basically while things are plugged in even if you're not using them they still draw power which adds to your electricity bill so <laughs> okay so i got that pizza going in the background whenever i get the chance i try to get together whatever ingredients i can for dinner so here is the orzo here are the string beans and I've already thawed the fish. So I went ahead and brought this one out because I wanted to refill that flour. I don't want to come over here to make a dish and I have to refill the flour. No. So I might as well refill the flour after I finish making the dish. So. So this is the pizza dough. Let me go ahead and put this back in the fridge. So this is the pizza dough. And I'm just gonna get some good hand turns, hand kneading on this, just because it's so small. It's not really, um, the hook really isn't hitting it the way that I would like for it to. So I'm just gonna knead everything else in by hand. It really doesn't need much more work. It's already coming together and pretty sticky as a whole. That's it. I will reuse this. <laughs> this is the same one from the, um, whatchamacallit. Actually, it sticks better to glass. And then I can go ahead and have that open and empty if I wanna make another baked treat. Let's try to get that on as good as possible. It's didn't clear out the time on the microwave and the oven's on, so I can't see the time. Okay, set that back. Go ahead and put my printed recipes away. I have like a list of uh, favorites or preferred per se um, recipes like if I'm gonna make bagels, I'm gonna use this recipe. If I'm gonna make tortillas, I'm gonna use this recipe. Um, and those are those, so like, the, like those are the recipes that I just like to have printed out because I don't like going back and forth between my phone to get the recipes. And of course, gotta do our best to clean our station before we leave our station. So we're gonna unplug this back. Clean this up and luckily, well not luckily because I was intentional about doing it. Um dishwasher is already empty. I'm trying to wipe very lightly over this um mushy flyer that I still got here. And the rest that's like right there. I'm gonna scrape it with a this is baked, this is done up another dish. 
but it keeps it easy for me. It's like, I gotta wipe it down with just a napkin. Clean your station for you, leave your station. So now I'm just going to get out the spices and herbs that I would like to use. Let's see. Um, I would also like some oregano. Where's the oregano? Here it is. So. Uh, cayenne, salt, parsley, paprika, oregano. Okay, I do not feel like washing many dishes by hand. As of right now, it's already looking like 10. So, let me wash my hands real quick. Um, uh, so, I would like some ghee on the pan. So, I'm just gonna go in with some cayenne, some salt, some parsley, some paprika, and some oregano. I'm gonna go get some ghee. So, we are going to see. Anthony's not even home yet, and I don't want this this part to be too hot. I mean, cold. I think the only thing I really need to start right now is the bread. And then everything else can wait. I can salt these. And I can salt this orzo a bit. And I can take this mason jar. And I can put water in the mason jar. So that it's ready for later. This bread has expanded. Oof, the handle's hot. This bread has expanded. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the oven. So I'm just gonna get this in the oven. It went in at 6.08. I will be checking it again at probably 6.28 and 6.38. Since Anthony isn't home yet and I want the food to be hot, I am going to put the saran wrap over and, um, what is it called? Put this in the fridge so that it's just ready to just take out the fridge right when he gets home so that shortly after we could be eating. So, oh, this is, ugh. so. Just putting this saran wrap on and then it'll go into the fridge until it's time to cook. For sure, for sure. But if I had cooked this, ch this chicken, if I had cooked this right now, oh my goodness. Let's see. And of course, clean as you go. This is kind of at the end. But also kind of the middle. So this is kind of just different ways that I prepare myself and get myself ready for whatever next step there is in my cooking. Whatever little task I can front load, I'll go ahead and front load. So I went ahead and took the bread out. Turn that off. 
Here's the bread. And I can just let that cool down till it's time to cook everything else. Hey y'all, so take note of that time change. By this time, I was not really in much of a talking mood. I don't know if it was just for this clip, but when I tell y'all, I was legit just mumbling, like, so now we're gonna do this. Like, the volume got so low, and I could just tell that, like, I wanted to get in the kitchen and get out. But as you can see, I'm just taking the ghee and putting it in the container, in the container, in the skillet so that it can melt. And then I went ahead and put that water into those two different pots. Getting all the ingredients out before actually cooking is extremely helpful. So whenever I have the ability to do it, I go ahead and jump on it. So now I'm just waiting for this to get a bit warmer. So I went ahead and got my plates and our lunch containers out for tomorrow. This is at about the right temperature. And here is that chicken from chicken the fish from earlier and I realized that I'll likely be cutting this in half so I went ahead and cut that in half and I am going to put these on face down So as you can see, I went ahead and put that fish on face down and I wanted to just go ahead and kind of simmer and steam those stream beans in the back while everything's just cooked. Another step that I really like to take each time that I make dinner is to set out our containers for lunch because our leftovers from dinner are going to be our lunch the next day. I really don't even look at them as leftovers at this point. I intentionally cook enough for four servings, two tonight and two for lunch tomorrow. Now that I've taken all of the fish out of the skillet, I'm going to use that exact same skillet because it has all those goody goody juices at the bottom of that skillet. And I'm going to put in some heavy cream and as you can see, I'm seasoning it. That's likely going to be paprika, salt, that type of good stuff to get a nice sauce on top of this dish. And that's either pap um, parsley or oregano. Now these are the types of nights that I love because I get to the end of the night and I have used all of the items that I cooked. So I am not left with anything outside of the four dishes that I have prepared. So now what we have for that night was toast, orzo with fish and sauce, and string beans for the night. So delicious. Again, thank you all so, so, so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.